I'm Atubo George and I'm so excited today to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, this is a new week. Now, we are still in the month of August and God has started doing amazing things in our lives already. Praise God. So, so this week, be expectant because God is bringing you his word. He's bringing you his truth. And when he sends his word, it becomes to you everything that it speaks about. Are you ready? Before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for our daily bread as the Lord commanded us to do? Join me right now in faith and declare, say, Father, I demand right now and I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, you know, sometimes, like most we say this every day, it's not a mere confession. It is actually an act of obedience. And let me tell you something. You better get used to obeying God as your routine. Praise God. Oh, yeah. You better get used to obeying God. Because if God says, say this thing every day, then that's just what it means. Say it every day. Praise God. Now, I've told you this, and I was trying to explain it to you last week. This thing's majorly is not on because of God. It's not because God doesn't know what to do. But it is because of the angels. Praise God. It's because of the angels. Now, God have commanded that Anytime the angels hear you say this, then they should know what to do. And he comes on this side and says to you, say this on a daily basis. You see, it's not about God. It's about the structure that he has put in place. That's why as a child of God, you must learn to follow the right routines that God has given to you personally. Not just following what other people are. Now, you can start by following other people that you know they are doing something right. You, know? you can start by following them. But you see, while you follow them, be seeking by yourself or for yourself. Turn your Bibles with me this morning. So Colossians, now we have been talking about being fruitful and productive. That's what God wants from us. And our team scripture is in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9 and 10. So I'll read it again. It says, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Verse 10 says that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Being fruitful in every good work. And increasing in the knowledge of God. Now notice something here. That... Your increasing in the knowledge of God has everything to do with your fruitfulness. Now, let's look at that word fruitful. What does it mean? It is simply saying to you, bear more fruits. Be full of fruits. That's what he's talking about. Be full of fruits. Then the question arises, what fruits? Praise God. Because, you know, it's so simple when we say be fruitful and productive. And all you're thinking about is making more money. Praise God. So, ah, man, I'm going to be productive. I'm going to start my company. I'm going to make more money. Hey, understand the mind of God. You see, you must get to that place where you realize that money is not everything. Money is not everything. Actually, you must get to that place where you begin to take decisions without money being the primary 
factor in your decision making. You know what I mean by that? I don't have the money, so I cannot do it. I don't have the money, so, oh, I've got the money, so I can do it. You must begin to learn to follow the Lord and not mama. So now when we say be fruitful, it's beyond making more money. It's actually being full of fruit. Now then, what fruit? He said here, being fruitful in every good work. I am a He didn't say doing every good work. He said that you might walk worthy of the Lord. Walk worthy of the Lord. Unto all pleasing. Then he says, being fruitful. In other words, bearing fruits in every good work. So now you see that he's not talking about you just doing the good work. He's talking about the quality of your action in doing the good work. What's that quality? He says, you should be bearing fruit. In the good work. Now many people are walking, but not everyone is bearing fruit. But his desire is that you bear fruit in the good work. And that's what I was sharing with you yesterday. It's not just about knowing what to do. You've got to be concerned about doing it the way that he wants you to do it. It must be his way. So being fruitful, he's talking about bearing fruit. And the fruit he's talking about there is, you remember Jesus said this. Let, let's, let's go there quickly. John chapter 15. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In verse 16, it says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye ask, ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Jesus speaking here says, hey guys, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And when I chose you, I ordained you and I sent you out to go bear fruit. And then he says that your fruit should remain. Now notice, he used the singular word fruit. He didn't say fruits. See that? No, he didn't say fruits. Now, now, now many, many of God's children haven't come to terms with this truth or with this understanding. So when he was talking about being fruitful, he wasn't talking about bearing fruits. He is talking about bearing fruits. It is one fruit. One fruit. Say that now. One fruit. So now, you have been ordained to bear fruit. And Paul says that you should be fruitful in every good work. So what does that tell you? That tells me that everything I'm engaged in, everything I find myself doing, everything the, the, that is good, every work that is good, it's not just the accomplishing of the work that God is concerned about. God is concerned about how I behave in doing that work. My work, my, my, my being involved with that work must do something in that place. And what is it? Bear fruit. 
See that now? It must bear fruit. And, and you don't need to think too far. So what fruit is he talking about? Oh, he, he told us in Galatians. Let's go there now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. He says, but the fruit. Notice that. He didn't say fruits. But the fruit of the Spirit is. He didn't say ah. See that now? So he wasn't talking about plurality of fruits. He was speaking of fruit as singular. Now understand this. It wasn't a mistake that he said, but the fruit of the Spirit is. He, he, English wise, you want to think he should have said, but the fruits of the Spirit, of the Spirit are. But no, he said the fruit of the Spirit is. And then he begins to mention love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, he says, there is no law. What's he talking about? This will help you. So look at this now. He says, the fruit, the fruit, I said is one fruit. We are all supposed to bear the same fruit. And it is one. So what does it mean, love, joy? Now, all those things he listed are the quality by which you identify the fruit. Love is a quality of the fruit. Joy is a quality of the fruit. So, so now he said, being fruitful in every good work, that's God's desire for your life. What's he talking about? He, he, you, you're working in a firm, you, you're doing your job, your nine to five job, and then you go to work every day. He's expecting you to bear fruit in that job. So, so what fruit is he expecting me to bear? He, he, Arya Manzabrakia. Listen to me. Now watch this. He's expecting you to bear fruit in your job. He's expecting you to bear fruit in everything that you're involved with that is good. You know why? Because you can be involved in the wrong things and bear fruit. It's impossible. It's good. Because that environment is not the kind of environment that it, the fruit is even expected. See that now? So it, it's got to be an environment of every good work. So you are involved in an honest work. But then there are always challenges that come with whatever you do. Like someone say, if you want to be the one who makes everybody happy, just to sell ice cream. But then funny, you know, people, some people still get angry with the ice cream man. Praise <laughs> God. Hey, you, you didn't give me on time. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? But, but, but get this now. Every work that you're involved with, there are challenges that comes with it. But here, God understanding how life works, have called you, ordained you, and released you for one purpose wherever you find yourself the purpose is that you go there and bear fruit and then that your fruit will remain so he's not talking about you bearing fruit today and tomorrow he tells me you know what i'm tired I've, I've done this no 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 he said your fruit should remain So, so now I'm said about bearing fruit. Paul now prays. He says, look, that you should be fruitful in every good work. That is the desire of the Spirit for your life. So now I'm walking and someone is now doing something to offend me. See that? Now when the person is doing something to offend me, what's going on? You remember, first of all, one of the qualities of the fruit you're supposed to bear is love. So I'm coming with this fruit, but then I'm going to be proven. 
I'm going to, you see, life is going to prove the kind of fruits that it's in you or that you're bearing. That's what life is all about. It's proving you. So, so now you say, okay. Someone that just shows up and begins to annoy you. Someone is having a bad day and begins to throw it on you. And trying to get you into, into that bad attitude like he is. And then here you are. I'm supposed to be fruitful. See that? So now, I'll continue to walk in love no matter what. If I stop walking in love, then the question comes up, which fruit were you bearing before? Oh, oh, listen, I'm concerned about my joy. Forget that love thing. Hey, hey, if it is not complete in these things, it's not the fruit that he's talking about. In that fruit, you must find love. In that fruit, you must find joy, not grumbling. You know, sometimes I say, if not, that is God, eh? If not, that is God, eh? the thing I would have done to this person. Oh, chai. It's just God that restrains me. Hey, 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 hey. You are not bearing fruit. You are not being fruitful. You know why? Because joy is not there. <laughs> it's God. Yeah, joy is not there. So now I'm wondering. It looks like the fruit, but uh, 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 something is missing. I'm supposed to be joyful in everything I'm doing. Every good work I'm involved in. I'm supposed to be walking in love. I'm supposed to be joyful. I'm supposed to carry the joy. Now, hear me, hear me. Joy is not from the outside. Joy comes from the inside. It's in you. It's in you. It's not that something happened so I am joyful. No! My natural state is a state of joy. Praise God. Yeah, because that's the fruit that is in me. He planted that seed in me. And that seed germinated and began to bear fruit. See that now? So as the fruit begins to appear, you are seeing it and you are seeing you know, just the same way you can differentiate from a mango fruit and an orange fruit. They have their different qualities. And by their qualities, you will know. So if the life of God has been deposited in me by the Holy Ghost, now he is saying that go and be fruitful. Now you know it's the same thing God said to Adam and Eve. He said, be fruitful. Now, when we hear fruitfulness, all we think about is childbearing. No, it's beyond childbearing. It's the quality that we bring to the earth. That's what God meant when he says, be fruitful. Be fruitful maintain your fruitfulness. Then he says, multiply. Now that's where childbearing comes in. But what's the purpose of multiplying without being fruitful? So you are going to multiply on the earth, yet no one is going to see the grace of God or the power of God or the glory of God in that multiplication because someone was not fruitful. Praise God. So be conscious about the fruit you're bringing. You are the one to manifest the fruit. So now, you look at this. He says, peace. Peace is one of the qualities of the fruit. Oh. 
you find people, they are never peaceful. It just takes a word to just upset everything about them. And then they go ranting and ranting and ranting. Have you met people who are not peaceful or someone who, who's just not peaceful? Hey. No, you don't understand. You don't understand. I'm a peaceful person. I'm a very peaceful person. It's just that. Hey, hey, hey. Be peaceful. Be peaceful. Be peaceful. Be peaceful. Yeah. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. What happened to your peace? You know, he said, I think he's in Colossians, he said that. He says, for he is our peace. He is my peace. I don't try to be peaceful. It's a fruit in me that is coming out. And you see the quality peace all the time. Oh, everything is falling apart. Everything is falling apart. But you, you still find this guy. He's so calm. He's so at peace. And you are amazed. Don't you know what's going on? Didn't you hear what's happening? Well, what are you talking about? Didn't you hear that inflation has gone up? Didn't you hear the price of things? Oh, oh is that what you're talking about? It's okay. We will get it done. What are you talking about? Peace. <laughs> Our time is up. <laughs> it's God. Listen. By the time we're done this week, you will walk worthy of the Lord indeed, bearing fruits. Oh, Father, we bless you. I pray right now for everyone listening and watching that the life of Christ in you will begin to shoot up and it will cast out every negative thing that have influenced your life and causing you to be who you are not let this grace be released upon you right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.